Previously on unemotional monotone four-wheel drive videos. So hopefully you've seen the short version in my previous video of getting stuck in a muddy puddle. However, in the full version of the video, I needed several good tugs from a 200 series to get free. Now I opted to ask Toyota why this happened, and this was their response. No comment. Suspicious. But that's okay, because I can tell you. Basically the rear U-bolt plates dug into the floor. I'm pretty sure I could have just reversed out of the situation if this wasn't the case, but it was. So the main purpose of this is to raise the clearance in this area and hopefully resolve that issue, as well as clearing up a few other things. Now in other news, 76 series Land Cruisers are bad at flexing. Now I found this out the hard way in my second week of ownership of the 76. I was around Newcastle and almost rolled over on the first minor incline I came across. Okay. Well, tree's coming down. But it's enough to keep you... Let me, maybe just try to drive it now. Okay. Maybe try to drive it now. I don't want to go up, I want to go down. I want to go down. That's terrifying. So I'm going to experiment with a few ways to stop me flipping over on a hill even a Toyota handbrake can hold you on. Now Steve-O from Jackass, he has a 76 series, and he told me what he thinks of it. Every time I see a pebble, my Land Cruiser falls over. It goes into my wheel. I know, man. And then it turns upside down. So what can be done to solve this issue? Well, we spend lots of money, we swing spanners, take measurements, and estimate. I think it's about time I mentioned this is going to be a mechanical video. So I've roughly calculated my constant mass that's above curb weight. Most of the stuff you can see in this video so with this information, I ordered the correct springs. And in my case, they're the parabolic springs that are rated between 300 and 700 kilos. Now this is a huge range, which makes me think something's gone on down the line to make them do this. So what the parabolic springs do? Well, there's plenty of other videos explaining this, and I don't want to steal their views with my immense popularity. So I'll simply say that they're supposed to be thinner where it counts, with allegedly the same, if not improved, performance when compared to regular leaf springs. This is by way of improved articulation and flexibility. And in theory, the leaf pack is thinner. And much like sumo wrestlers, the thinner they are, the more ground clearance they have. The other advantage is the ability to droop more due to the relocation of the rear shock mount. With the higher ground clearance caused by the U-bolt plates, the lower shock mount is mounted higher and therefore able to droop further at full extension. So to summarize, this will be a combination of low profile U-bolt plates as well as heavy duty parabolic springs, all in the effort of chasing the dragon to try and make a non-flexi vehicle somewhat flexible. So after a swift and amazing wardrobe change, we'll take it to the streets. In my last workshop related video, I fitted some low profile U-bolt plates to my car and then decided to test out the mess I'd made in monkey gum. And the frustrating thing is that I was completely satisfied with how the vehicle performed. It was exactly as I'd expected and I couldn't really think of anything that I wanted to change. Now this is unfortunate because in the months prior I'd already purchased a set of parabolic leaf springs and here they are. seeing as they're here, and I've already emptied my bank account, I may as well fit them to see what all the hype with parabolic springs is about. Now already I've noticed some issues, which I'll get to later on. But until then, I'd better take the car apart and throw these things in. But before then, I'll document all the measurements I can, so I can have a good comparison to see if these are actually better. 
So the first step is to measure the height of the wheel arch to make sure I don't crash into my garage roof when I drive home. I'll make that 960 millimeters. The other thing I'm going to do is try to flex up the vehicle and see if I can measure the angle of the cab while it's flexed. Now in order to do this, I've pre-planned by spending many hours building an over-engineered flex-providing device. So with this, I'll jack up the car and see if I can get any kind of meaningful information out of it. So the front is still firmly on the floor. The rear is about 50 centimeters off the floor with a fair bit more to go in terms of needing flex. From the rear, it looks like this, which for a Land Cruiser isn't too terrible, but I think I can do better. So I'd better get it down, get it apart and see what I find. There's nothing to see here. How interesting. Just look at that. Ah! Stop! Ah! Nothing at all. So this is where the problems become apparent. My existing spring pack is approximately 70 millimeters thick, while the parabolic springs are around 80 millimeters thick. Now being the fantastic engineering gentleman that I am, I preempted something like this happening and I left a few millimeters on the end of the threads just in case. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why does 10 millimeters matter all that much? But when you're an average at best looking male who's driving a huge four wheel drive around, every millimeter counts. And more importantly, these 10 millimeters are being taken from the place that I'm spending all this money to try and increase. Now my only explanation for this is that I'm severely overweighting the springs that are currently fitted to my vehicle. I don't know which exact rating they have from ARB, but I'm guessing that these parabolics are gonna be much more suited to the amount of weight that I'm actually carrying. I'll put up a picture of the other leaf springs that are available these are rated to a maximum of 300 kilos. And as you can see, they're missing an entire leaf when compared to my setup. And mine is supposedly rated from 300 kilos all the way up to 700. I feel like there was a bit of an engineering cop out somewhere along the line. Maybe the 300 kilos springs were sagging a lot, but this seems like a major overcompensation. And I'm hoping that they're not too stiff to be usable, or at least I'm hoping that they're much more capable than the ones that I have already. So I guess it's time to hope and take more pieces off. I guess I should point out that with these U-bolt plates, it's not all advantages and happy things. What happens is the shock then becomes the lowest part of the vehicle. And instead of hitting the U-bolt plate, you end up hitting the bottom of the shock. And you can see that this is rounded over this washer nicely. And I think over an extended period of time, this could cause a few problems with your shock. 
So I guess all that's left to do now is take out the leaf spring. Now what I find easier is to take out the shackle end first, which allows it to just pivot down at the front end. And if you do the reverse when you're assembling it, it makes life so much easier for you. So now that they're out, I can tell you that the weight difference is negligible. And the further I go with this, the more I regret it. So seeing as these bushes are very recent, I'm going to swap them from the old leaves onto the new ones and put them back in. So the first thing to do is to copy the process of fitting the U-bolt plates, which is cutting off this protruding bolt. That's me finished with one side. And as you can see, I'm getting progressively sweatier. This is because I'm keeping the door closed so that passers-by can't see me embarrassingly making YouTube videos. And then the secret will be revealed how many takes it takes for me to make a successful part of a video. So I'll quickly wrap up finishing the other side and then end this video. So I've lowered the car. Nothing fell off and nothing snapped, so I can assume everything so far has been successful. So let's measure everything and see if it still fits in my garage. So I've forgotten what the previous measurement was, so I'm going to find out when I'm editing this video. But it's here. And let's see if it's the same now, or less. So from the looks of things, with my rudimentary measuring tools, the tape measure, I've gained between 5 and 10 millimeters of ground clearance which means that I should still fit in my garage. Now let's find out if the flex has changed at all. So this is the after, 
I'm not sure if it's made any difference to be honest, but I'll find out in post-production. I'll do a side-by-side -side right now, and I have no idea what this is going to show, so let's just assume that I'm right. So that concludes this video. What I'm going to have to do is do more detailed testing of it on the next trip that I do. So you'll have to watch that video that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'd like to say at this point I don't know if I'm satisfied with how my car is with these new leaf springs. Like I said before, I was perfectly satisfied with how they were. The only reason I fitted these ones is because they arrived and I'd spent a lot of money on them and it would be a shame to see them gather dust or sold for a much lower price than I bought them for. So I've thrown them on almost as an experiment, and I'll have to compare them on the next outing. But so far, from what I can tell, I've just fitted stiffer springs that might limit the amount of flex that I've got. Anyway, until next time.